हरे कृष्णा very happy to be with all of you today evening <clears throat> i am going to discuss a topic which may be of some use to you but i will need the uh, active participation generally in a satsang program in a class the speaker is active not everyone in the audience is active <laughs> but this is an exercise all of you have to do so you know you will have to be in pairs so are more devotees expected because if they are expected and if they come they will get lost because we are going to so anybody knows any more people expected coming possible. possible okay so what do we do then will someone explain to them as they come in or should we wait or what we can start na no? so then somebody will explain to them because they will get lost otherwise they will not know what's happening we will you will explain to them okay thank you so what we will do today we are going to learn a very important principle of bhakti yoga all of us are practicing bhakti yoga right you could go to any organization any spiritual path but when you come to iskon our main practice is bhakti yoga and there are some secrets in bhakti yoga which if we learn then our practice will give us the reward that is promised getting it so today we are going to practice one of those secrets by which you will derive immense spiritual benefit and it is palpable you will experience it so chaitanya mahaprabhu has taught us that if you want to experience the happiness of loving krishna loving god then if you do two things it is more than enough chant hari krishna and don't criticize anyone it is easily said it is easier said than done not criticizing anyone is possible if we appreciate them not criticizing is negative don't criticize but if you appreciate others then there will be no question of criticizing so we are going to discuss today how we actually can appreciate what is the science of appreciation and you are going to experience that by some exercise that we are going to do you don't have to be a devotee for this even if you have no interest in krishna consciousness how appreciation is so powerful we will discover today is that okay so first you will have to make you will have to have a partner you will have to pair up with someone and one of you will be a the other will be b we won't sit like this for the whole evening i'll give you 10 seconds 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 9.5 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 okay. a partner only two pair pair a and b okay how many of you don't have a partner please raise your hand you don't have a partner prabhu doesn't have a partner so you go join him join him join prabhu ji on the chair yes now who else doesn't have a partner please raise your hand everybody has a partner okay can we start okay so first how many of you have access to writing resource some paper pen or phone you can write everybody can write okay so now i'll give you an exercise don't have to share okay one of you in your team one of you is a and the other is b all a's raise your hand who is a a okay and the other is b okay all of you know who is what thank you now the first exercise doesn't have to do with your partner 
you don't have to share with your partner this is a personal question that you have to answer is it okay don't have to tell your friend partner right now anything think of someone you really appreciate think of someone whom you really you like that person now it should not be your guru maharaj <laughs> it should not be shila prabhupad why because guru maharaj and prabhupad will anyway appreciate <laughs> yes yes living living people living people that is also very important i was about to say that you are very smart you went one, one step ahead you went it should be a living person and it should not be your guru maharaj or shila prabhupad is that okay are they alive on planet alive it can be anyone it could be your school principal college librarian it could be your neighbor mr david <laughs> it could be anyone i don't know okay so some person you appreciate on the paper you write his name and write what are the qualities that person has which really inspires you all of you individually you have to do this exercise regardless of whether you are a or b or c the time starts now i give you 1 minute just write a name and write some qualities that person has Yeah, hundred qualities you can write if you want. Hare Krishna. Okay, now we will give a difficult exercise. Now, what you did just now, you are writing. Many of you stopped writing because you were thinking. So, what happens when you stop your pen? Your head starts getting active. <coughs> but the exercise i gave you journaling is an extremely powerful tool if you don't stop your pen you may say but i'm going blank what to write so write that right i'm going blank right now i don't know what to write but prabhu has given this stupid exercise <laughs> so i have to write i can't remember any good quality in this person but i sure i'm sure there is some good quality basically you have to keep writing are you getting this is called before you do this i'll tell you this is called free writing what happens when you keep writing and if you stop your head start getting active if you keep writing then slowly somewhere you 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 go through all the filters all the kachra and you access your heart and spiritual life is all about the heart space we begin with the head but eventually we enter the heart space we want knowledge of god but eventually we want to experience god isn't it some people know so many shlokas they will know all the verses of the gita but they may not experience god today i met one person that person no doesn't know any verses but loves krishna so there are many people like that So ultimately, with all the knowledge, we want to experience God. So now, I'm going to give an exercise just for exactly sixty seconds. After that, you have to work with your partner. But now, again, one exercise I'll give you. Think of the person you dislike the most. <laughs> Think. Have you thought of someone you dislike the most? Think of one. Who is that blessed soul whom you dislike the most? <laughs> <laughs> not you <here>, come on <laughs> oh good that is great so think of someone you disliked in the past or you dislike now for whatever reason and when i say start not now when i say start you will start writing good qualities in that person wait 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 not now and when you start writing naturally all of you will go blank 
But remember, what is the technique we are writing? What is it called? Free writing. Free writing means what? The pen doesn't stop. See, I'm not. See, journaling is another workshop only. And the benefits of journaling. I don't want to give a lecture on journaling today. If you want to know what are the benefits of what you are doing now, if you want to know, there is one very very famous Baba Ji who will give you lot of gyan on this. That Baba Ji's name is Google Baba. Internet will give you all the answers on how journaling has medical benefits, how journaling has mental health benefits. All that I don't want to give you boring lecture on that. But I want you to do some exercise so that you get some some idea. Is that okay? Yes. The person you dislike the most. Be honest to yourself. The person you dislike the most, whoever it is, what are the good qualities in that person? Start and when you start writing, even if you go blank, keep writing. You can write bad words to me, but you keep writing. Whatever comes to your mind. Okay. Your time starts now. Hare Krishna. Till I play the kartal, you keep writing. Right, 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 right. Don't stop. You promised to be sporting. Right, right, right. Hare Krishna. Thank you for doing this exercise. And I'm really sorry I made you do this. But trust me, journaling is a beautiful uh, tool. by which you can overcome loneliness depression uh, hatred you can overcome uh, many diseases it's shocking it's surprising you may think i have a recurring headache what is journaling how can journaling be a medicine i have one friend who had constant constant pain in his feet his feet had got swollen or something had happened and all the tests were done no help finally some it was discovered there was some tumor something here in the ears and it had an effect on his toe i was shocked how the body works we don't know where is the solution and where is the problem similarly for lot of complications in our life how journaling can help i may not be able to explain to you logically but it's a very powerful tool and for those of you who are thinking in hare krishna Shila Prabhupad, did he speak about this? Because we are, we want to be loyal to Prabhupad. <laughs> so if you have that question, you can meet me. I will tell you all the quotes of Prabhupad. To begin with, August fourteen, nineteen seventy-three, Shila Prabhupad's lecture in Los Angeles. The entire lecture, Shila Prabhupad says at least ten times. You know, he says like this: Write, 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 write. Just write two lines, three lines. Write something. Write. <laughs> you know, it is as if he is desperately telling us to write. So I've made a, I've taken a printout of that uh, lecture and put it on my uh, on my table. I read it all the time just to get faith that Shri Lopapad also wanted us to write. So this is a very powerful tool. So now we'll keep the writing aside. Now turn to your partner. Everybody has a partner, right? One of you is A, the other is B. Now listen carefully. in this first round there are three rounds of appreciation and we will slowly see how it can become spiritual first we will do a material appreciation think of any person you like it could be the person about whom you wrote in the paper or it could be somebody else but it should be someone who is alive and it should be not your guru or shila prabhu pa one of the problems in appreciation is we generally appreciate those whom we have nothing to do with or who are very distant so it's okay but in this round of appreciation you will tell your partner you will start speaking about that person to your partner so when i say start when i play kartal a will speak to b about whom about about the person you appreciate about the person you like who is alive who is not your guru who is not shila prabhupad is that clear no you don't have to if you don't want to basically tell about that person he she whatever but wait there is a catch here you can't just appreciate that person 
please listen to the rule very carefully please thank you when you are when you appreciate this person to your partner your partner doesn't know that person right don't appreciate the your partner don't appreciate your is that clear it is about somebody your partner may know that person that's okay but it should not be that person okay and when you are appreciating all listen this is a very very important rule listen to me carefully when you appreciate this other person and your partner is hearing attentively you will appreciate that person but you will be speaking about yourself i will explain but first try to un- let it sink in what are what are you going to do you are going to appreciate someone but speak about yourself how does that work well you will be surprised most of us all the time when we appreciate someone this is exactly what we do so i am not asking you to do something new how it will work if i was your partner let's say i am your partner and the time starts now so i have to start speaking right this is what i will speak so you will get an idea how you are going to appreciate that person to your partner is that okay so my time starts now hari krishna prabhu i want to tell you about my one very very nice devotee his name is uh, jigar he is such a good devotee you know such a nice person in during covid my mother was very sick i was staying with her for 9 months 10 months and i was in so much anxiety and he used to call me every day and he was so caring he dropped everything and he came all the way to my hometown to be with my mother he cleaned the house he helped me take my mother to the hospital he did so much for me and even when i am i was sick he was taking care of me and now he's gone back to mumbai after going back to mumbai also he would call me every day then he cooked prasad for me are you noticing what is happening what is happening who am i appreciating i'm appreciating jigar but what i'm speaking about how he has helped me or how he has influenced me or how i have gained so much from him it's basically all about me are you getting it anybody confused clear na so when we appreciate someone generally we appreciate that person because that person has done something for me it is not wrong it is not bad it is a beginning but we can't get stuck there but we will begin with this and then we'll slowly go up is that clear first a we'll talk to b and very very important b will listen attentively because in the third round there will be a twist so the so b will have to work hard on what a has spoken so therefore b has to hear attentively you can't be thinking of the person you want to appreciate you know we are very very poor hearers everybody likes to talk so is that okay can we do this all of you you do you agree to take part in this three round exercise trust me your life will change it will become auspicious if you do this sincerely can we do this the time starts now a to b a will speak to b now b will speak to a please swap 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 b will speak to a hari krishna thank you what you have done just now is trust me this is a most powerful recipe for overcoming depression because depression is all about counting our curses 
or inadequacies and appreciation what you have done just now is counting your blessings all that is about yourself but at least you are talking good things how you have got something good from someone lot of people are suffering because they are only talking about how they have got bad deal in life and all that it's all about me because i'm talking appreciating i will feel loved some of the toughest guys i've seen you know how this appreciation works all of you know goranga oh this is getting recorded <laughs> i'll be in trouble but okay goranga prabhu you know he's a one of our chopati leaders and been in the movement so when i joined the ashram even now he's a manager you know he will be he will swap his fingers like this and he will get things done so when i joined the ashram there was another brahmachari in our ashram called stoka krishna prabhu who was very humble shy and goranga prabhu would walk up to him and say hey stoka and goranga prabhu would remove his kurta if it was torn somewhere and make it into a ball and throw it at him and say hey i want it to be stitched within by tomorrow afternoon and so krishna prabhu this service he would do as extra nobody gave him this service but out of love for devotees he would stitch their kurtas and he, and he and goranga prabhu would say hey i want it by tomorrow afternoon yes prabhu yes prabhu and next day afternoon hey stoka where is my kurta oh prabhu ji i was busy hey and then he would you know he would joke with them bully him lovingly and like this they would spend time and we were all in the ashram together happy days going on so these are all ordinary activities you know it's simple day to day it happen it's happening at home all everybody is having small no ordinary exchanges at home but how these ordinary exchanges see there is appreciation how it affects and influences us as we get older i saw when after see the time is very powerful how the time cycle moves is not in our control by the strange vicissitudes of time stoka krishna prabhu eventually left the ashram and he got settled as a grahastha he got married and then goranga prabhu and we were continuing in the ashram and then years passed and sto krishna prabhu got cancer and he was diagnosed with the advanced stage of cancer and he had only 6 months to live and we were all in denial no no he has to be all right his wife was crying he had a small baby it was very intense situation and i i had a service and and then i was reading bhagavatam for him every day and we brought him to temple and last doctor said now he has just 24 hours he will leave his body any time now this is february first week 2006 and i am reading bhagavatam for him and he is lying on the bed and all the tubes and everything is there and then gorang prabhu such an educated intelligent man you know from iit brilliant and he is walking up to me and he is saying yes toka to bach jayega na kuch to hoga there has to be some way out we can save him no i am like he is talking illogical and then the doctor came dwarkadish prabhu and gorang prabhu is telling him no prabhu ji yeah kuch to hoga there has to be some way out and i am thinking what has happened to his logic what has happened to his rationality and then gorang prabhu got restless and then he came up to me and he said brajbihari let me read bhagavatam for you i said prabhu ji i am reading you just because he was getting emotional so he wanted to distract himself so he sat down to read and he couldn't continue reading so i continued to read and but when his voice when he started reading little bit sto krishna prabhu was lying on the bed his eyes sparkled and he looked like this from the corner of his eye and he realized it is goranga prabhu and they were old friends and then sto krishna prabhu suddenly started moving in his bed this is just 17 16 hours before he actually left this body he is like he is trying to say something and then i felt goranga prabhu so krishna prabhu kuch bol raha hai he is saying something and in that last minute when everybody is crying so krishna prabhu also is attached to his wife and his daughter who just born i mean all those things are there emotions are high but then he looks at goranga prabhu and he starts smiling and he starts moving his hand like this and like this like he is just doing something and i am trying to understand what is happening and looked at gorang prabhu looked at him and gorang prabhu bol raha hai kya bol raha hai kya bol raha hai 
100% understand kya bol raha hai and then suddenly i understood what was happening it was like an eureka for me i said prabhu he is taking you back on memory lane look at your kurta and his button was broken and i said he is asking you to take out your kurta for so that he can stitch it for you and when i said that so krishna prabhu immediately started you know as if i am right and then he started doing like this he wanted to stitch garam because that button was broken he could see it and i saw it and when he said that garam prabhu completely broke down and he just held his hand and the whole night he was sitting with him and i was thinking in 1995 96 when these incidents when it was part of the ashram this 10 11 years ago nobody realized that this would happen something like this would happen but the small exchanges in our life small acts of appreciation small acts of joy is not mundane it is not ordinary because it means a lot when you are on the verge of your deathbed or when you are when you are when you are the verge of leaving your world all these things mean a lot so natural human affection is not discounted not denied in krishna consciousness the toughest managers i have seen they are the softest heart <laughs> So let us not deny our humanity in the name of spirituality. Let us learn to appreciate even if they are ordinary emotions, ordinary things. So what you have done in the first round, I hope you have done it properly. What I said, you spoke about whom? Yourself, right? The second round is going to be tricky. Listen to this carefully. Again, A will speak to B. B will listen attentively, but you are going to appreciate the same person now. the same person you are going to appreciate to your partner but you are not going to speak anything about yourself is it possible what do you think is it possible ha huh? yeah ideally we should have done that but then but then this is very very tricky i'll tell you why we may not be used to speak appreciating someone because here the whole idea is you are going to appreciate that person to your partner as if you have never born as if you, you you are not there in this world you are seeing it from above are you getting it this is a very deep exercise if you do this properly you will be touching a higher dimension of happiness because now you are declaring to the universe that there is more to this world than yourself if i was your partner this is what i would say whom did i appreciate in the first round jigar what did i tell about him how he helped how he helped me in the second round my time starts now so i'm going to say something like this jigar is an amazing devotee you know what he does every day he cleans his house and then he cleans the kitchen for his mother so that his mother can manage the kitchen nicely and his mother cooks breakfast for him makes lunch dabba for him and also gives him evening snacks he goes to work works very hard but saturday and sunday he has holiday so he makes up he treats his mother like a queen saturday sunday he cooks breakfast lunch and dinner at home and serves his mother and sometimes takes her out on a date he says i'm taking my mother for, to this restaurant or he takes her out he takes care of his parents so his father passed away some years ago every year he goes to gaya and performs pind tarpan for his father and he is very rooted very grounded and he is working in a multinational american company but he has got such devotional mood and attitude that everybody in his office is calling women as mataji <laughs> and he is very respectful and none of the women feel offended by his uh, respectful dealings with them my time is over so i stop but did you notice here i appreciated him but did you see anything i spoke about myself this was totally opposite of the first round did you realize this is as if rajbihari das has never born i did not appear only in this world if i am seeing from the clouds jigar's life you are in the cloud seeing your person whom you are appreciating if you do this you are going to go beyond yourself this is an amazing life you are going to enter can you do this 
can we can a and b do this together not together one by one first a will speak to b the time starts now please swap let b now speak to a hare krishna b to a hare krishna thank you for doing this so what you have done now is you have made a loud declaration to krishna that krishna there is more to life than me i am not the center of the universe we say no we are not the center of the universe i am not the enjoyer i am a servant this is actually practical application of being a servant where we can appreciate someone without i being the center in any way and if you can do this consistently you will see the happiness you experience is very very high level and the person you interact with that person can also feel that you genuinely love them i'll give an example in our ashram there is one brahmachari who is a medical doctor by profession highly qualified he could be earning millions of dollars every month actually and he joined the ashram and he used to cook prasad breakfast and lunch for all the brahmacharis now those of you who cook every day you know cooking is a thankless task right if you cook nice you hardly get appreciation but if little bit cooking is godward you get immediate feedback <laughs> right mata ji will watch also for this <laughs> right cooking is like i say goalkeeper's job or wicket keeper's job in cricket no you save so many goals you don't get appreciation ek gadbad kiya immediately get feel so he used to cook for 150 200 people every day breakfast and lunch and brahmachari is you know brahmachari can really make you humble so he was cooking every day thankless task get up early in the morning 6 o'clock in the kitchen by 7:30 breakfast is ready then 9 o'clock he'll go for lunch cooking every day he was doing it one day he made upma ras up, and during those days i used to eat upma rasam sambar now i don't eat all of that but uh, south indian i liked all this at home so one day when he after breakfast i met him in the ashram i held his hand i said kya prabhu how you made upma today and rasam and chutney it was exactly like how my mother made it was so tasty i took three helpings and the upma was exactly like you know i was appreciating how i enjoyed upma rasam and it was so tasty and he was listening he was also happy to hear that i got benefit from this and it was a good exchange but suddenly at one point of time i decided to change the gear i took it to the second level i said prabhu you know i'm just thinking you are a doctor you could be earning 7 to 8 lakh rupees every month and you left all of that and you're thanklessly serving the brahmacharis just out of your love you have so much love in your heart now you noticing here i'm not talking about myself i'm just talking about his qualities how he is helping so many brahmacharis and i remember prabhu during yatra you cooked for 5000 people and then you had a fever next day but i heard that how you managed to enter. so i was talking about all the incidents of his cooking and prabhu you are maharashtrian and you learned all the south indian items so well i remember you went to shirangam and you went to udupi and you learned from one cook and it was so austerity you performed just to please devotees so when i was talking about him at the second level you know when i entered the second level he is a very stoic brahmachari his eyes became moist and it filled up with tears and he just he didn't cry but he was like extremely grateful and then i realized that this appreciation was real it's not that the first level is bad 
because see when you appreciate someone you have to speak about how it has influenced you also that is very personal we are not we are not mayavadis <laughs> we are not impersonalist right if you like some if somebody has done something for you you should happily say are i love upma rasam you know <laughs> i like it so that is also good but the second one is more important this is not the only time there's another incident i'll just tell you one one more incident you know we went brahmacharya went to yatra to narmada river and we were staying there and one of the brahmacharis by accident i think he disturbed a bee hive and the bees attacked a few brahmacharis and they got all this and the bus at a narrow it averted an accident a small accident and few devotees got injured so when i was not part of that i was somewhere else when i heard and saw this the first thing was krishna thank you it was like as if nothing happened to me so i was appreciating the fact that i was safe and but then i took it to the next level i met all the devotees who were part managing the yatra i empathized with them i helped them i could see how that had a more fulfilling experience for me going beyond ourselves so what i have done just now is an amazing exercise you are going to touch a higher dimension of happiness if you can consistently do this but now you are going to do something supremely spiritual you are going to enter the third level of appreciation where you and your partner will work together so you won't be swapping i'll just give you total 3 minutes you decide which example to take first whether your partners or your example you decide and you have heard your partner also very well what you will do now is you will talk okay how many people you appreciated or heard about appreciation total two you will decide which one to take up first and you and your partner decide discuss what are the qualities of this person that is coming out and where do you see these qualities in the universe do you see these qualities in your guru now we are getting guru and prabhupad also in the picture do you see prabhupad having this quality do you see guru your guru having this quality do you see krishna having this quality do you see any character from bhagavatam do you see anybody from uh, ramayan do you see anybody from chaitanya charitamrit like this oh okay you don't know anything about spiritual life do you see anybody in history abraham lincoln mahatma gandhi what i'm talking about is the universe much bigger than you and him or her are you seeing what first we are talking about ourselves then the other person now the whole vasudeva kutumba comes for spiritual life is all about the world being one family can we see these qualities in the universe if you are my partner we were talking about whom jigar so the third round would be something like this what are the qualities of jigar that comes out very strikingly caring towards his mother and who in our history is known as a great devotee of mother chaitanya mahaprabhu is known as matra bhakta shiromani he is known as the greatest devotee of his mother so jigar is re- revealing qualities that chaitanya mahaprabhu exemplified he is performing shrad pindadarpan for his father every year he is very grateful to his father shila prabhupa dedicated his krishna book to whom to his father gaur mohan de so jigar is displaying qualities that were seen in shila prabhupa and chaitanya mahaprabhu so when i have differences of opinion with jigar because we are part of the same management team in preaching i get angry with him then i have to remind myself are he is carrying he is having quality is displaying qualities which chaitanya mahaprabhu and shila prabhupada displayed so he is following their footsteps so automatically my fighting will become less <laughs> are you getting what i'm saying so you can take both examples both names but you have only 3 minutes and try to find out where which character where in scriptures you find similar parallel to what you have seen in that person are you getting it quality is one thing but more than quality example somewhere else it could be some it could be some other devotee you saw same quality go beyond him and he, yourself go to the universe see krishna please see the lord in that quality lord in that person this is how we see god in another person 
we are not doing anything speculative jeev goswami said in the 11th canto purport that if you want to see if you want to become krishna conscious you have to see krishna in the heart of every living entity and if you want to see krishna in the heart of every living entity you have to begin seeing krishna in the heart of people who you are close to so they are revealing krishna's qualities can you do this exercise any confusion no your time starts now hare krishna Thirty seconds more. Thirty seconds more. Thank you so much for doing this. I was doing this in New Jersey last year, and uh, devotees were sitting like this, and one devotee raised his hand. after the third round and then i looked at him i was about to tell him i want to say something immediately he put his hand down and then i looked at others and then i was talking and then again he raised his hand he was thinking something and then again he put his hand down so i knew there is something in his heart i didn't disturb him because it i think the exercise kind of did something with him so i thought during prasadam i'll catch him so after the program after the class then i went to him everybody was taking prasad i said you wanted to say something he said yes prabhuji my partner when he started speaking he started speaking about the person i dislike the most in our community <laughs> and i couldn't i couldn't tell him anything because he will come to know that i don't like that person but then i told myself okay this person is very bad but maybe he has a good relation with him maybe he has got help so i didn't say anything so i tolerated the first round but second round he started saying his other good qualities for other people he has benefited that was too much for me i didn't know that person has so many good qualities but the worst was third round where i had to think how krishna has these qualities <laughs> <laughs> I just couldn't. So then he said, "Prabhu, but I'm grateful. Now my dislike for him is reduced. <laughs> not gone. <laughs> This is not going to be overnight. It will not happen. No. So the point is, see, we are narrow in our vision. We are living, you know, frog in the well. We are attached to our prejudices, views. So what you have done just now." is you are getting krishna you are seeing you are learning to see krishna in others a real appreciation is able to see god in other living entities you won't believe this one amazing you know this is actually a 3 hour workshop you know in in sangha programs like this we do it short fast forward like t20 cricket is short and fast <laughs> everybody likes it also so this and we did this for the counselors in mumbai the senior leaders of our communities i was doing this we have once in four months all the leaders meet so i did a 3 hour workshop so at the end of the third round so uh, mata ji was sitting on the ladies side men on the other side so i had any realization because they are all leaders and we had time also to discuss so one lady she raised her hand she was a senior counselor in our congregation and she said prabhu ji i'm very grateful for this exercise because you know i could never appreciate one quality of my husband because he had this uh, you have this intuitive ability that sometimes i would go for the social gatherings parties and you know get togethers or something you would sometimes tell me you know i think you should not go for this program because you will not like that and you will come back disappointed and then i would not listen to him i would go and then i would exactly what he predicted would happen 
and i would come back instead of thanking him for his wisdom and his intuition i would criticize him saying that because you cursed me i had a bad experience <laughs> <laughs> so and she said she said prabhu ji it happened not once or twice it happened in the last two years it has happened five times so then and then she said that because we did the third round because in the entire exercise first round second round i was appreciating my husband only but in the third round my partner because the exercise was to see divinity to see examples from bhagavatam ramayan chaitanya charitamrit krishna so my partner made me realize that my husband is displaying whose quality which is a very famous past time where you see something like this happen in the bhagavatam shiva and not parvati sati you remember this sati wanted to go for her father's program <laughs> so this mata ji is saying i am grateful because of this exercise now i can see that my husband is representative of lord shiva he has this quality of you know understanding what i should not do what i should do so now i really appreciate my husband as lord shiva so that husband prabhu ji was also sitting in the men's side and he raised his hand i said yes prabhu ji say and he said but prabhu and mata ji i am very grateful that today at last my wife is able to see me as lord shiva <laughs> but i must confess i have always seen her as durga <laughs> <laughs> everybody was laughing just like you are laughing it was a very sweet program the energy level changed because everybody was in the mood of appreciation actually when we do this sincerely you will see that your compassion and your preaching will also be very effective you know there is a two story i'll end with this and then we can have Five minutes, ten minutes of questions. I just want to end with this very, very heart-touching story, which I personally witnessed. And when I tell this to people, many people can't believe that something like this can happen. There was one boy who came for our program first time. His name was uh, uh, Chinmay, Chinmay Kanaki, a Gujarati boy, and uh, and he got excited. You know, in our Bombay youth preaching, we tell the boys after giving them mala, don't tell your family because we are scared that they will go home and they'll tell their parents and their parents will say are krishna is a cult don't go there so he said okay prabhu ji don't tell your parents okay okay prabhu ji he took the bead bag he went home and uh, next day he came and he said prabhu ji i told my father i said i told you not to tell him so what happened he said my father was not at home i called him he was in his business tour and i told him dad i went to are krishna and my father became very grave he didn't say anything he said son i'm supposed to come next week from a business trip but i'm coming in 3 days i want to talk to you something very serious and my father hung up prabhu ji so he's going to come tomorrow so i thought now gone you know i told him i told you not to tell your father I said, he said, Prabhu ji, I got so excited. You gave me mala, so I told my father that you know, of this Prabhu ji gave me mala. Or that I said, oh no. So I said, okay. Then I thought I'll never see him again. That boy went. But you know what happened? After three days, his father came back to Mumbai, and fourth day, this boy came to temple. And he said, Prabhu ji, my father was so happy that I went to Hari Krishna. And he came back early to congratulate me, and he said, son, his father's name is Chetan. kanakya and now chinmay is telling me about his father my father held my hand he said son i'm proud of you are going to hari krishna you know when i was a young boy your age i went to study in boston and there one young brahmachari very attractive looking his name was niranjan das brahmachari he was so nice so handsome so attractive so compassionate he would cycle all the way from the temple to my university and he would get me cake cookies mahaprasad he would give me so much love and i was so overwhelmed that somebody can love me so much so then i started chanting hare krishna just to make him happy and i was chanting 16 rounds and then chinmay is telling that i asked my father then what happened and my father said then i was chanting so much and my father took me to the attic open the trunk 
and showed me the Krishna book and the beads which he had got in 1978 from Niranjan Das. He says he still has them. My father still has them, and he remembers Niranjan Das very fondly. And then my father said, "Son, but you know." Then I stopped chanting. So I asked my dad why. He said, "What to do? I was chanting 16 rounds, and then you know I came to India. Then I got married to your mother. I got into Maya." <laughs> So he started telling all these things to his son, but you know I'm a fool. I gave up chanting, but I'm so proud of you. You are going to Hare Krishna, and this boy is Chinma is telling me all this. So Prabhu ji, my father is now very happy that I'm coming to temple, and he's told me I should listen to you and I should chant Hare Krishna. And you know what happened to me? I was ecstatic because that very day, you know who this Niranjan Das Brahmachari from Boston. Today is Niranjan is only as Niranjan Swami Maharaj, <laughs> and this is 38 years, 37 years later. This is 2016. I am talking about how many years have passed? 88, 98, 2008. 38 years have passed, right? 38 years later, I told him, you know, this Niranjan Das Brahmachari your father is talking about. He is now big sannyasi guru. He is only as Shri Niranjan Swami Maharaj. Don't tell your father anything now. day after tomorrow is a youth festival in the temple called prerna and he is the main speaker will surprise your dad just tell him your dad is such your dad my dad dad they have called you as a special guest for the youth festival only youth come but you are one of the special guests so here is this pass you come they want to honor you don't tell your father who is this niranjan das brahmachari so he said okay so he, he invited his father his father came His father is sitting on the chair. He has no idea what's going to happen, and I am one of the organizers. I am looking at his father constantly and looking at the door. Maharaj will enter. <laughs> I wanted to see his father, and that experience I will never forget for the rest of my life. Niranjan Swami Maharaj walks in, 38 years later, from this door here, and Chetan Kanakya is sitting on the chair, and he looked at him. He looked at Maharaj. His eyes lit up. and he because he is not sure but he knows and he like and then he sits and the whole class kirtan is like you know his jaw lower jaw dropped he was just nodding his head smiling he was like he was gone mad actually <laughs> the maharaj gave a class then kirtan and after the in india we have a tradition after the class you know people gather around the speaker <laughs> and they talk that's a typical indian thing So Maharaj finished the class and kirtan. Then Maharaj got out of the vyasas and all the boys surrounded him and they're talking. And I saw Mr. Chetan Kanakya run towards Maharaj, and he's behind. And I'm looking at the whole thing, and he's saying, "Swami ji, Swami ji," you know. And he's, he's one amongst the crowd. Maharaj is looking, smiling, and Maharaj sees his hand. Maharaj looks at him, stops. Time froze. Maharaj looks at him and says, "Boston." Well, Maharaj remembered some connection, na? No? 1978. He was one of the many boys that Maharaj was preaching to. But when Maharaj said Boston, he was shocked that Maharaj remembered, and he came in the front. And as and Maharaj looked at him, Maharaj held his hand, and to everybody's shock, Maharaj said, "Chetan." When Maharaj said his name, he. you know he cried i have never seen a man cry like i saw that day <laughs> i never seen any uh, man cry like he was sobbing like a baby in front of his son i was shocked maharaj embraced him maharaj held his hand and i was thinking later on how did maharaj remember his name after 38 years because maharaj genuinely gave him love maharaj saw krishna in him maharaj saw he is a part and parcel of krishna who needs to go back to krishna that is real appreciation see remembering name is an external thing you know it's not that if you remember a name it's you know some people have good memory also that's a detail i'm not talking about a technique of remembering name i'm talking about the genuine compassion and you know this what chetan kanakya did after that next day he came up to me and said prabhu ji i'm going he started chanting 32 rounds every day He says because I want to make up for all the lost years. 
so i'm just we wanted to give this share the story of how compassion and love and appreciation is extremely powerful it can transform lives dramatically beyond what you and i can imagine anyway i can go on and on and on i'll stop here any comments or questions on what we discussed so what we have done today to summarize we have discussed three levels of appreciation first level of appreciation is about centered on self second level of appreciation is centered on the other person independent of you and third level of appreciation is to see krishna or to see divinity in the other person hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare we have 5 minutes for questions yeah. any questions or comments hare krishna yes prabhu and then prabhu first and then sir and then third okay we'll take questions No, I'm not sure if that is okay. <laughs> Because in your case, it may have worked. See, this is a very dynamic thing. It's person to person, context specific. We have to take. Because sometimes what happens? Some people do something really bad. There is sometimes abuse and injustice. And if you keep quiet, you are allowing that abuser to do more abuse. <laughs> so forgiveness is uh, not. something which cowards practice forgiveness is internal it is something which will help you go forward in life but for the past you may have to sometimes clarify your situation explain what has happened otherwise your service will get affected if somebody is spreading rumors about you if somebody is very mean to you and you keep quiet and because of that you go you don't get service then you will get frustrated and inside it will become toxic it will become cancerous so if you are genuinely very forgiving then you should be peaceful and happy so you are very you are very special case you have said but i can't make it a general for everyone anybody here who is going through abuse or injustice and if i tell them just forgive and move forward like prahlad maharaj then i'm being i'm also being abusive <laughs> actually i'm also being violent because this world has lot of bad people doing lot of bad things and uh, if somebody said a nice statement the world is uh, the problem in this world is not because bad people are doing bad things but good people are keeping quiet <laughs> you know so there is a lot of injustice happening wrong things happening so sometimes you have to put your you have to be see it's not that you have to be vindictive it's not that you have to also beat up that person it's just that you have to do it the right way but ensure that a uh, person who is doing something wrong is brought to book how you do it that's another thing and in your case it worked great but in some cases it may not work but forgiveness is needed ah huh? forgiveness is needed if you don't forgive that person you will be miserable but in the name of forgiveness see justice and forgiveness go together they are not mutually incom- they are not mutually exclusive one mata ji in our congregation her husband is to come home drunk and beat her physically with the belt and she came to the forum our forum and she said prabhu ji i forgive my husband i said you are not forgiving you are simply weak stock classic case of stockholm syndrome she is just weak she is not forgiven because she is suffering so you need counseling you need mentorship for that so in your case it worked hari bol <laughs> but in some other cases it may not work hare krishna yes prabhu and then we'll take only your question and then your question yes prabhu so can you answer this one question that you said interracial problem is not that much invested in uh, in that person the person but in some concerns they have in within the relationship yeah. so the way you describe correct Uh, 
people that you love and if you identify the needs of them and you don't need very much of that correction is needed in a relationship but it's just like this it's like a bank account in a bank account if you have deposited 1 million dollars you can withdraw 50000 dollars if you have deposited 50000 dollars you can't withdraw 1 million dollars similarly just like there is a bank account there is an emotional bank account in another person the emotional bank account how much have you invested how much have you deposited which means how much have you given love how much have you served how much have you shown care each act of kindness is a deposit in the emotional bank account of that person so if you have deposited 1 million dollars worth of love care kindness and then once in a while when you correct that correct is a correction is a withdrawal <laughs> in the emotional bank account but many places the deposit is very less and constantly we are withdrawing it creates conflicts so we have to see am i am i depositing also am i investing in the relationship and for investing there are different ways you can't say i'm investing but but your language of love may be different from your partner's or your ch- child's language of love there are five languages of love i hope you read that book i recommend it to all grahastha uh, now i don't remember all the details one language of love for some language of love is touch physical touch is their their expression of love for some language of love is service if you love me then serve me you know get this get that clean up the house like i have one friend his wife's language of love is service so when he goes home and he does everything he's a he's a millionaire he earns so much money and all but she feels unloved only when he cleans up the curtains he does something for her does something at home now then she feels he is really loving me <laughs> so her language of love is service so his language of so he has understood our language of love some language for some language of love is service for some language of love is gifts giving surprises gifts they feel very loved for some language of love is giving time listen to me boss for so that is everybody has a prominent one prominent love language so when you understand that and you speak that language then you are depositing so once you are deposited then once in a while when you correct and withdraw it doesn't harm the relationship but if you are constantly withdrawing constantly withdrawing then the relationship becomes very toxic and it has an effect on the children and other i've seen it i have seen it all the time so deposit and withdraw that is a way to understand so i have one grahastha friend you know we are cultivate i teach habit formation i was teaching someone recently indexing linking there is a technique of how to develop new habits so who knew what he has done he has made one habit every day he gives one rose to his wife he made it as a <laughs> every day he is a 55 year old man he says last last 6 months he says my relationship with my wife has become so beautiful what we didn't experience in the last 30 years we are experiencing now every day he goes to that flower wall outside his house buys one rose comes and gives his wife every day as a as a religious duty <laughs> so what i'm saying is language of we have to learn to deposit in a relationship and then withdrawal will happen because you are living together the false egos the false egos are coming together that will happen ha huh? automatic yes. <laughs> withdrawal is automatic <laughs> deposit has to be effort as well see there is a saying in hindi before you say one point i don't all of you follow hindi जिसने जल्दबाजी में जिसने जल्दबाजी में शादी की उसने अपना जिंदगी बिगाड़ लिया जिसने जल्दबाजी में शादी की उसने अपना जिंदगी बिगाड़ लिया जिसने सोच समझ कर की उसने कौन सा तीर मार लिया जस्ट इन लाइटर वे सो एवरी ग्रहस्था हैज इट्स चैलेंजेस सो uh prabhu ji wants to say something and but i see two hands i think it's a comment on this and then a yeah, comment yes both of you can give a comment and then i'll take prabhu ji's question just pause yes yeah 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 then you need then you need third party uh, involvement you need you need mediation you need third party you need to approach someone whom you trust both of you trust but it's workable it's possible yeah it's overdraft definitely you want to say something also
you'll have to ask you'll have to ask successful parents i don't have experience of parenting to be honest but i know the principles of parenting because i think i look at my father what he did with me or my mother what they did with me so if you have a daughter then i have seen that for sister for so see for daughters then you need to give them a lot of time and listen to them and if you have a son you have to maybe play sports with them play football with them so whatever your children like if you show interest in that then they trust you we generally want our children to like what we like but if you show interest in what they like then they trust you and then when their friends in school give them something wrong association they are able to come back to you and uh, confide you can win their trust so children need to trust you and they will trust you when they see that my father loves or my mother loves what i love we are insecure we want our children to love what we love we want them to love krishna but if your child thinks that my parents love krishna more than me then you lost your child because the child will feel very insecure so you can't make your child feel that you know i love krishna the most and you are like okay you are secondary so unconditional love is first second is happy experiences you know my father i still remember my father would take me every sunday for an ice cream play tennis with me they were happy experiences and third exposure to good knowledge my father encouraged me to read so many books watch good movies which were life enhancing so i feel these three things and fourth very important my father encouraged me to take responsibility and do service for the community service unconditional love good education and uh, happy experiences then the children learn to trust the parents and uh, they reveal their heart or they confide and they otherwise what happens when is a friend in the school shows interest then they trust that friend and then the friend says take drugs they feel he is my well wisher there is something called as assertive parenting also i'm sure you know it better there is there, there is neglectful parenting there is aggressive parenting and there is assertive parenting neglectful parenting is let my son child do what he wants that's also that's actually violence only the other is aggressive parenting i am telling you do this i am your parent just obey the child says okay i will do it now because you know i have no choice but when i have freedom i will i will rebel that is both extreme assertive parenting is you lay down the rules but you explain why not just quality time you give quantity time to your child quantity time is extremely important we think we we undermine the importance of quantity time so i have heard a few seminars of urmila mata you know urmila mata ji urmila mata ji bhakti vegan go sami maharaj i have heard some of their seminars on parenting very hard touching urmila mata ji says when she was a young girl every morning her father would wake her up at 4 o'clock in the morning because he had to go to work at 5 now she would be fast asleep at 4 he would wake her up and why because he wanted to play with her pillow fight so he says my father would do pillow fights with me every day morning 4 o'clock because he had to go for work but those are very happy experiences for me i enjoyed it so then when i became a devotee for me when i would get up at 4 o'clock to go for mangala aarti i would be always very happy i didn't know why i was happy because waking up at 4 meant a happy experience for me so mangala aarti waking up was very easy for me you getting it so the happy experiences they have a connection somewhere so she was saying we have to give a lot of happy experiences to children and engage them to do some service so that they get responsibility and they feel a sense of contribution so anyway i'm not an expert again i'll repeat <laughs> i'm i'm not a parent so but i've seen my friends who are parents now follow these principles or violate these principles and sometimes when you have an aerial view you can see better when you're involved na you you don't able to see it because your attachment blind you but sometimes i can see are you are doing wrong and i can see what where it is going so like that i know one one prabhu my god his daughter when she was a young girl i think she was 11 or 12 you know she had that grace and beauty i knew that she is going to be very very successful if she chooses the field of modeling or acting extremely beautiful and charming at the age of 11 and 12 and his father would tell me that prabhu my daughter you know all the boys you know as she was becoming a teenager 
the boys would harass her call her and she was enjoying all the attention she was getting from the boys in the school and he is frustrated the father so he said what should i do you know what he did i said prabhu you should consult a grahastha counselor who can guide you but i wanted to i knew what he should do but that grahastha counselor unfortunately not a counselor the grahastha senior told him prabhu you should take shelter of krishna <laughs> because only krishna can help so he started chanting 32 rounds instead of 16 every day and i wanted to tell him 16 rounds extra means 2 hours extra those 2 hours you could spend with your daughter 2 hours extra every day you are chanting that you know you could go on a walk with her you could spend time with her but he didn't do that he increased it to 32 then 48 then 50 rounds meanwhile his daughter no i don't want to get into the story of his life but he is in a miserable condition now is he left krishna consciousness his daughter has gone uh, into very bad association his, his family life is in a mess now because he artificially he tried to impose krishna consciousness without understanding the basic parenting principle you know making her child realize that krishna is more important to me than you how oh, that was a violence on that uh, girl poor so i don't blame her for where she is now anyway so i have learned from those mistakes of my friends seeing people suffer in the community so i would request children getting bad association in school go that extra mile play football with your son listen to all your daughters you know <laughs> all her uh, so called stupid silly stories make her feel important why because you may not be interested in what she is interested but you are interested in her <laughs> so if you like her if you want her then you better be interested in what interests her of course some parents are special they have managed to give their daughters and sons krishna consciousness in a way that the children have lapped it up but that are exceptions sorry i'll stop here one i'm sorry prabhu i kept you waiting i just yeah i'll not take long i'll just end with this yes prabhu yeah. yeah. yeah you can go to you can visit google baba <laughs> i mentioned google baba ji no no i am see if i it is all uh, is there available on the internet abundantly available i have not even read those things detail because i know it it has helped me okay i'll tell you my personal experience briefly about journaling you know the human beings are of two types right brain and left brain right brain are emotional people who are perceptive who can give overall picture abstract left brain are logical so those are engineering background they are logical step by step you know this na logical brain and emotional brain so i have the right brain person i can give a class where i can speak abstract principles vaguely i can speak a lot on humility love i can speak on all of this i can go around the world without giving anything specific because i am more perceptive person is that clear i am a right brain person but by journaling my left brain started developing i became logical systematic step by step if you see my classes also many times i am able to give three reasons four points acronyms all that is because of journaling if you are a left brain logical person by journaling your right brain will develop you will be more empathetic you will be more perceptive so it balance i'll give a simple example of this i'll end with this gorang prabhu was my manager no, manager is a wrong word he was my mentor senior in the ashram and sometimes for some responsibilities he would tell me hey prajbhar you can't do this because it's management manage, managerial related you can't do this chhod de you give counseling you give gyan <laughs> but you can't do management chhod de so i also i also accepted what he said that i don't have that skill set but because of journaling every day my left brain started developing and i surprised myself my guru maharaj i single handedly organized his lunch program with 150 brahmacharis in my mother's house and we prepared chappan bhog 56 items i organized the whole event getting all the brahmacharis who were staying in different lodges different guest houses getting them on a bus to my mother's house they had gone for a yatra to udupi i managed to coordinate the whole event with the help of two other boys and it went off smoothly and gorang prabhu was also one of the guests one of the brahmacharis who came and he was like prachal tu kya sab i said ah prabhu ji wow and then i didn't end there exactly one year later maharaj my guru maharaj came again to udupi for something else 
with some hundred other senior grahastha councillors and that time again i organized same kind of program in my mother's house and gorang prabhu was also there and when gorang prabhu came he said bruj pyari the whole world is trying to get guru maharaj to their house and maharaj has not gone to their house and you managed to get guru maharaj twice in one year <laughs> what did you do and how did you organize i said prabhu ji i am buddhu i don't know but then after he went back you were also surprised and i was also surprised then i realized oh how did this happen because of journaling because it helps you crystallize your thoughts na it's abstract it becomes more logical and more clear and if you're a logical person only thinking logically step by step then when you write you're able to appreciate finer sentiments you're able to appreciate the broader picture so that is one way it has benefited there are many other i can give one hour lecture only on the benefits i got <laughs> i write every day journal if not for one hour at least 5 minutes 10 minutes i write today i was very busy but i managed to write for 10 minutes so i encourage all of you to write anyway paper is getting wasted in the material world so much so many newspapers magazines are getting published so you can use some paper for <laughs> writing about krishna <laughs> okay we'll stop here prabhus i'm sorry we went over time thank you very much hare krishna shila prabhupad ki jai